Hello, my name is Anastasis and I'd like to welcome you to the second season of the Painting Delight show. In this show I'll try to teach you a fantastic technique called wet on wet. We're gonna paint landscapes, we're gonna use oil paints and this is a project where I try to help people overcome uh, their difficulties regarding this fantastic technique. I would like to thank you very much for the support that you gave me in the first season and I really hope you enjoy the episode we're gonna do in the second one. So I have a stretch canvas in here and I have covered it with a thin even coat of liquid white. Liquid white is a thin oil based paint that allows us to blend color on the canvas rather on the palette. So it makes life much easier and it's also very fun and very quick to paint this way. So today I thought we'll uh, start with a mountain scene, a classic subject that we regularly do. So let's start immediately with a twins brush and go into some of the alliterant crimson. A small amount and we tap the bristles of the brush into the paint to achieve a nice even distribution of color but not much paint because the crimson is a very very strong color as you can see there is not a lot of paint here tap it firmly and let's go in here and by doing crisscross strokes as you can see the color is blending with a liquid white and we have different values on the canvas that means we have natural light in the sky and the only thing we do is just blending make sure you have a natural bristle brush for that just a little pinkish glow on our sky not much paint And now, with the same color, the same brush also, I want to have some water in this painting. So we have to reflect the sky in the water, not much paint. So let's say that we have a lake in here, so we want to have this reflected in the water, and we use uh, straight strokes like that, because we're gonna paint still water. just something like this and make this as straight as possible and always start from the bottom and work upwards so in that way we achieve depth okay now without cleaning the brush we're gonna go into a small amount of thalo blue the blue is much stronger than the crimson so there is no problem using the same brush just tapping the bristles the same way and let's go up here and do the same thing with our crisscross strokes and you know the beauty of this is that you actually have a little bit of lavender color in the sky because we already have the crimson on the brush and it's so fantastic because it's like having different shades, different lights on the canvas. It adds interest to our painting. Something like that. And we want that in the water too, so we're going to get thalo blue. And I also want to have some thalo green in the water because light is playing in the water, so there's a nice green glow in there. And now we're going straight again from the outside in. Never go this way because you won't you won't be able to blend the streaks that you're gonna have. Always from the outside in and from the bottom towards the top. Straight, straight strokes, and do the same here too. so easy to paint like that as you can see already we have 
a nice sky, some water, and we're gonna come back and blend all these, and it will be, it will become one actually. Okay, now with a clean, dry, a clean and dry brush, I want to bring this together. Start from the from the center again, and now by blending that, we actually achieve to make the colors come together. We do not know when the one starts and the other stops. As you can see, there is a natural combination of the colors in here. And this is where the liquid white helps. Nothing to worry about. Just using a big brush and some colors, you can do amazing things. And we do the same in the water. And that's easily, we have a very nice background and very quickly okay now let's paint some clouds I want to use a fan brush here this is a number six fan brush and I'm gonna go into some titanium white these are natural boar bristles so we're going into the titanium white and get a little touch of bright red I want to have a nice pinkish glow in my clouds, but do not use much. Load the brush full of paint, and now you have to decide where you want your clouds. Using the corner of the brush, we're gonna make circular strokes that will end up being our clouds. So we go in here and continually moving we're gonna have a very nice cloud, you see it was just so easy and now I'm gonna take a twins brush and I want to blend that and bring it one with the sky so we're only using the top corner of the brush and the bottom of the cloud and we're just blending we're using very very firm oil paints and that's the reason we are able to blend all this without becoming mud and as you can see, I have blended the bottom of the cloud and I'm gonna fluff it and make it one with the sky. So by making big circular strokes like that, but very gentle, it's very important to be gentle here. Just caress the canvas, caress the cloud and very, very lightly go across. And that's easily we have a happy little cloud in the sky. And tell you it's very wise to do these clouds one by one so we have depth and layers so doing the same thing same color let's go in here let's give company to this lonely cloud always always keep your brush moving it's very very important you can also have streaky clouds if you want let's have some here Use your imagination. Nice tricky clouds around. And we're doing the same thing. This is a fantastic way of practicing. And you can also use other clouds, other brushes, I'm sorry, to make clouds like the twins brush, the ones brush. You can actually use any brush that you want to make clouds. I just picked the fan brush today. Now, very very gently go above this and we do the same with the streaky clouds but we just use the brush this way and not that because the paint will smear and you're gonna have lots of strings that way you control it better just be very very gentle with that and by the time we have the liquid white underneath you do not have to worry about as asking um, adding a lot of pressure of pressure in here so very easily you know I want to have a couple of clouds in here too so let's say that we have a nice cloud in here a small one and do the same thing you can have as many clouds as you want it always depends on you and if you want no clouds 
the not put any. Let's have another one, always, always using the same colors, bright red and titanium white. Nice pinkish glow. And let's have let's have another one. Making big big circles here. And another 3D cloud here maybe. And make those in the center smaller because you're actually going further away in the painting. So we're gonna blend these two. Gently lift it up. Always remember to be gentle with clouds. Blend this one too. And we are ready. That easily we have a fantastic sky. Now I want to make a mountain in this painting. We're gonna spend a lot of time doing mountains in this season, so let's say we have a mountain here. I'm gonna take some white. This is a number 10 palette knife I'm using. I'm gonna take some black, some Prussian blue, and a bit of a little crimson. I want to have a nice uh, purple color in here. I want to over mix that, make it one, maybe a little bit more crimson for me. Maybe a little bit more black. It's up to you to decide the value of the color that you're using. And we pull this out very very flat on the palette so we actually have a nice distribution of color on the palette and now by going into this nice ridge of paint we get a little roll of paint on the edge of the knife and this is what we're using to paint so let's decide where we want our mountain to be let's say that we have a mountain you decide how many picks you want how big you want it, how small and let's go in here and use a lot of pressure Let's have a nice mountain here. Another peak here maybe. And I have used white on this mountain mixture color because I want to send it back in my painting. But if you want to have it closer then it's okay. Use whatever colors make you happy. Let's have another pick. A small one in here. And we're using lots and lots of pressure here. Now scrape off all the excess paint from here. And this helps us remove the excess paint that there is on the canvas. And now we're gonna blend all that. This is the same brush I use to paint the sky with. It's okay to have these colors here. Now sneak in here, blend it, and this actually helps us remove more paint so the highlights will stick better and gives us a general idea of how our mountain is gonna be. Just pull the paint down. Same in here. And what we always want when painting mountains is to have the top more distinct compared to the bottom because down here we have more uh, mist. So make sure you have more paint in here than down here. Okay. 
Now let's put some highlights. I'm gonna use the big knife once again. I will go into the titanium white with a bright red in it. Smash it out very very flat and get a roll of paint as we always do. And now using absolutely no pressure is very very important not to add any pressure otherwise we won't be able to make this paint to break. So let's come up here, make a little angle with a knife and very gently just caress the canvas that easily. Gonna have a bit of snow in here and let's have more in here. You know, but it's very very important not to add any pressure at all. We want a whisper like movement. You can see all those bumps and holes in there. This happens because we do not have a lot of paint underneath, we do not have a lot of liquid white underneath, and also we're using a very very firm paint. You can't do that with a traditional oil paint, okay? So make sure you have a very, very uh, firm paint. And always make sure you follow the angle of the mountain. It's very, very important. A little bit more snow in here. Just let it float right out of your knife. Let's go to the smaller peaks too. Let's have a little bit in here. And maybe we have a bigger a bigger peak in here. There's a big valley. Okay, so now let's put some shadows. I'm gonna take titanium white and attach a very small amount of phthalo blue because if you put more phthalo blue than needed you're gonna actually have more distinct shadows that means you're gonna have the mountain a bit closer so add little at a time okay do the same thing by pulling out the paint flat and cut off this roll of paint and now it's the same thing, we use no pressure at all, just go right behind the highlight and very gently make this more distinct. And each peak needs its private highlight in order to pop, to pop up in your eyes. And you know, by going above this peak you actually push it back. Let's do that again. But I'm hardly using any pressure at all. Same thing in here. And as you can see, I have used no paint in here. That means actually there is a peak that is far, far away. And will have neither shadows nor highlights. Now we're going to return to the highlight color. And I want to have another peak in here, so we're gonna pull this down and make another peak. That easily. We can come in here and make another shadow and that easily we have another peak. Very, very easily. And you can have as many peaks as you want. Just make sure you have their private shadows. It's very, very important to separate these aspects in your mountain. A little bit of shadow in here. And as you can see, this valley also goes back. We can see that this is secluded by this peak here. And that's easy, we have a nice mountain. You can also come in here and fix what you don't like. You can go right in front of this one. Just follow the angle of the mountain, it's very, very important. And we have more pink in here because the light source is in the center, so we have more light hitting the mountain. 
and you can also sneak in here and give this pig a private shadow. As you can see, we can se separate all these. And that is in that paper, we have a very nice little mountain to play. Now I'm gonna find my cleanse brush, make sure it's clean and dry. And I want to have some mist in the bottom of this mountain, so very gently, following the angle of the mountain, just tap. Very lightly. And if you think you're picking lots of paint, you can just shake it off your brush. Very, very gently. Lift it upwards, always for following the angles. And do the same in here too. And we are ready. This is a nice mountain, a very basic shape, very basic highlights. And it's always up to you to vary the colors. But I just wanted these colors to match the background. So when you're painting at home, it's very wise to stand back and see what you have, fix what you do not like. Always do that. Do not just go and paint and then in the end find something that you don't like because you won't be able to change it that easily. So let's step back and see what we have. Yeah, I'd say we're going very well in here. Maybe I want this peak a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay, let's paint some nice foothills. Let me clean off my palette a little bit. And let's use let's use a twins brush. I have a dirty twins brush here. I want to go into some sub green which is very firm as you can see. I'm gonna have some black. This is midnight black. And let's have some white. I want to have some nice foothills in here. Some nice foothills. You know, if your paint is very, very firm, you can add the least little amount of paint in there, but please do not use much because you're gonna ruin the paint and you'll have to throw it away for this matter. Just a little, little bit of paint thinner if you cannot load your brush. So we have some green, titanium white and midnight black on the two inch brush. Let's have a nice foothill in here and make sure you save some of the misty areas in here. So just by tapping, just by touching here the canvas, we can have a nice little foot here. Give some character. Don't just make it flat. Just have some nice foot heels playing back in the distance in here. And it's one of the easiest way to paint foot heels just by tapping. Nothing to worry about here. Just up very, very gently. And you can also use the one inch brush. I just had that dirt in here. Alright, so, you know, it's very, very important to layer the painting. So, what I want to do here is take my paint brush and I want to mist the bottom of that. So we just tap using a lot of pressure using the top corner of the brush and lots of pressure. Make sure your brush is clean and dry. And by the time we have the liquid white on, this happens automatically you have nothing else to do, just tap. And the more you tap the more it blends with the liquid white and the mystery it gets. So now we have tapped thoroughly and we lift upward, removing the top marks and very, very gently go above that. And I think it's very interesting to add some indications of distant trees on this foothill. So we'll just lift upward with a one-inch brush 
just lift the top of this foot heel and that easily lots and lots of trees pop up as you can see you're doing nothing actually except that lifting the paint that's on the canvas already as you can see we have lots and lots of trees going on here and make sure you pull straight up okay let's have another layer of foot heels so we go into the same color but only darker because in the landscape the closer you get to the eye the darker the color becomes so let's have some more black and some more sub green but not that much of the titanium white just a little bit very small amount here okay so let's come in here again make sure you, you save the separation in here does your color maybe a little bit more darker for me and we just do the same thing that we did earlier just touch not so much pain though just tap, it's very very basic, very easy to do such foot heels the oval brush makes fantastic foot heels also we have used it quite a few times in the past and I really hope you enjoyed the first season I'm looking forward for many more episodes let's have a nice peek in here don't go that straight a little bit more paint okay and we're doing the same thing let's get a twins brush let's clean just tap tap firmly on the bottom and can you see the misty effect we're getting there's lots of pressure when doing that and it's very important to have a strong easel when you're doing that I have made by iron, this is actually a step ladder and I hired a blacksmith to make me a mechanism that will hold the canvas sturdy it's very very important to have that and now we have missed it that one too we're gonna get the small brush again to lift it upwards and have more trees and you can add layer after layer of foot heels very nicely some nice misty foot heels in the background now I want to have some trees in here let's take let's take the, the number six fan brush and let's go into the sub green and take some midnight black and I have thinned my paint a little bit just to make it stick better a little bit of white but not much white and let's go in here and just make some nice tree indications if there is a forest back here and we're just touching the canvas make some nice little trees back in the distance and you can use both sides of the brush for that and as you can see some of them are more distinct some of them are not 
And this is the beauty, it actually pushes this back as you can see. It's a very, very nice effect to have in a painting like this. And always make sure you vary the height of those. And also make sure they are close with each other, do not leave gaps in between. A little bit more paint. And you can use other brush again to do that. But I think the fan brush makes them a little bit more detailed. It's very fun to use. There we go. Always, always saving the mist. As you can see, we have lots of layers and achieving a lot of depth in our paintings like that. Always make sure you have lots of depth in your paintings. We do not want flat paintings. And I just continue tapping here. It's very, very easy to do. One of the most basic things. Now, by the time this is a lake, I want to have a very nice reflection. So I'm gonna extend this, I'm gonna extend the edges make it sort of roundish okay so now this is this is one of the most beautiful things to do using this technique I'm gonna have a twins brush here and let's decide where we want our reflection so we actually pull straight down make sure you pull straight down and do the same thing in here too and if you think you have some gaps that you do not like you can go back and just fill them in and you cannot make a mistake in here because you have the reflection so whatever you do not like you just pull and you have your reflection and make sure you pull more in here compared to the center and always always pull straight down and now very very lightly go across and this gives us a nice water effect okay I want a water line here I'm gonna take some of my liquid white small amount of liquid white and a little amount of dark sienna to that pull it out very very flat on your palette and then go across like that and you have a nice roll of paint on the top of the knife now when making water lines make sure you make them as straight as possible so let's just go in here and scratch in some water lines always keep your knife moving And the same way on the other side too. It's very, very difficult for some people, including me, to do nice water lines, but it's only a matter of practice. And now we can add a couple of ripples here and there. We have actually brought the land and the water together. So let's come in the foreground. I want to mix a big pile of paint. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take some black. Let's have a bunch of black, some Prussian blue, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, some Elysian crimson. And I also want to have some thinner green in there. I want to have some nice evergreens on this painting. Make sure you use a lot of paint for that. Okay. 
is between R94. And let's use a fan brush today for the evergreens. We're gonna load the brush full full of paint, full of dark color. Use lots of paint for that, both sides. Okay. You can see how much paint there is in there already. You can also shake it off a little bit into the pile to have a nice sharp edge. So let's decide where we want our trees to be. Let's have a big one in here. And now just by using the corner of the fan brush, let's come here and just touch. And as you can see, a nice evergreen is born. And use more and more pressure as you go downwards. Let's have another one. These are very fun to do, very good practice. Let's have one in here. and following the same pattern using more and more pressure as you go down lots of paint on the brush and let's have another one why not let's have a smaller one right in here always always starting with the corner of the brush and using more and more pressure more and more of the brush as you go downward there we are and I want to have some nice bushes in here too so let's take a small brush here a one inch brush pull it through the paint in one direction and load lots and lots of paint so we have a nice curve in here and by having the, cur the curve upwards let's push in some nice dark areas for our bushes make sure you have a lot of paint for that and let's have some reflections in here too just reverse your brush and let's have some nice reflections Now we're gonna take the big brush. Let me remove some of its excess paint. So let's decide where we want our reflection. Grab that, pull it down, straight down. And very, very gently go above that. Let's make some tree trunks for the evergreens now. I'm gonna take some white, small amount of titanium white, and a little bit of dark sienna. Put it out flat, but do not overmix it, leave it marbly. And cut off a very small roll of paint, and go in here and add the tree trunk. just scratching and just touch the inside of the tree and the more you go down the bigger the movement you do with your hand to make the tree trunk bigger so let's put some highlights on these trees let me wash the hand brush and I'm using odorless paint thinner to wash my brushes but you can also use uh, baby wipes you can use uh, baby oil it's up to you I just prefer paint thinner because it cleans the brushes better so I'm gonna go into some cadmium yellow and some of this nice dark color that we made some sub green a little bit more paint always remember that the evergreens are generally darker 
than other trees. So I want to have a very nice green color. Let me add the least little amount of paint thinner because one of our golden rules is that a thin paint will stick to a thick paint. So I will want this highlight color a bit thinner. Let me add a little bit more. Just a drop of paint is enough. Okay. As you can see there is a lot of paint in here. And let's put some highlights on. Just go above the dark and put some nice highlights. Always remember where your light source is. And that easily we have finished our evergreens. Now let's make some bushes. I'm gonna go into some paint thinner with my one inch brush. And let's go straight into some cadmium yellow. We need lots of paint for that. I'm gonna go into some yellow ochre, some of my dark color in here, some of the sub green. We get a bit more of the sub green. And it's very, very important to add a lot of paint to do the bushes. Pulling straight down. As you can see, I'm pulling in one direction and going into the yellows and the greens. Add a lot of paint. And as you can see, we have our curve again. And let's go in here, let's start from this one, just using absolutely no pressure, just touch. And as you can see you have a nice little bush in here. Now play through your colors. We use no pressure at all for that. And you know, by the time we have the lake, we need some reflections. Always remember to reflect in the water what you have above it another nice bush lives in here as you can see we have lots and lots of leaves going on here this is the beauty of this technique you're hardly doing anything to achieve what you want and if you have trouble making your paint stick just add the least little amount of paint thinner or even liquid white it's just that the liquid white will distort the color and it's not what we want. Let's go to some yellow ochre now. Let's have a big bush in here that comes right in front, reflecting the water. And now, very very gently, we need to make the reflections. But be careful because this is a very very gentle touch here just caress the paint that is in the water you see we have some nice tricks and now very very gently go above that and we have some nice reflections very very easily now we're gonna go into some Van Dyke brown in here cut off a roll of paint maybe a bit more and we want something to hold that. Just bring some land in here, a nice mass of land. Very, very easily. Go into some dark sienna with titanium white. And now the same way we did with a mountain, just go above and caress it. This will be the highlight of the stones very very gently as you can see the paint is breaking and adding all these nice effects go into some liquid white pull it out very very flat and cut across and let's have the water line make it as straight as possible Alright, 
and now we have to bring all that together so reversing the brush in here we're just going above the stones we made and we bring the land and the bushes together as you can see by the time we have a thinner paint on the brush this can stick easily on the film paint we have underneath it's very very important to learn to layer the paint to have the thin on the thick and you really need a very thick paint for that let me scratch some sticks and twigs here and there this will add a little bit of interest in our painting now let's come forward in this part I want to have some big evergreen trunks again always remember to work from a pile let's make this a pile again it doesn't matter that we have the green in here because it's gonna be mixed on the brush anyway load a lot of paint a lot of paint and let's decide where we want our trees to be let's have a couple of big evergreens here just touch making a center line this is gonna be your guide and now using just the corner of the brush we do the same thing just using the corner of the brush give this some nice limbs and use more and more pressure as we go down let's have another one and let's have one in here I want to separate them a little bit and just touching once again just by touching okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna take a big brush and go into the dark paint I want to have more bushes in here this bigger brush just saves time and just push use a lot of pressure for that just push upward and fill this in nicely lots of dark paint and this is a good way to practice your strokes always use the rounded corner up and if you want it you couldn't uh, if you want you just don't want to have this filled up you can have a reflection down here but right now I don't want to do that make this a little bit higher all right so we actually follow the same procedure with the trunks the highlights go into the center and just touch a little bit in here and go back to the brush with the green on it more dark color this is a nice color nice dark green and I'm gonna add a little amount of paint in here to be sure that this sticks on top of the firm paint and now the light source is in here so we're gonna highlight this part of the tree and let's come in here and give the leaves on this tree more paint and let's go to this big one
and on evergreens we always want more light in here rather on the bottom and this happens automatically because the brush picks up the dark paint we have in here and also the paint is reduced from the brush so we just have it naturally nothing to worry about and let's go to the orange brush again make some bushes load a lot of paint just by pulling and let's have a nice bush in here let me remove that let's have a nice bush a nice big bush and as you can see I'm hardly hardly uh, making uh, any pressure in here you just touch and let the brush bend a little bit I'm not applying any pressure, that's what I wanted to say very very easy to do but it's just that you need practice nothing more, let's have a nice red bush in here Isn't it nice? Just vary the color, do what makes you happy. A little bit more green. Always make sure you play through the yellows and the greens. Make some orange, have, have some uh, yellow ochre. A little bit more of the sub green, and if you're having trouble making your paint stick, just turn it down a little bit. You can also use liquid clear for that. And this is very, very good practice. It's probably one of my favorite ways to paint bushes. You know, this is a very nice place to have a path. Let's have a path. Let's have some Van Dyke Brown, pull it out very flat and get this roll of paint. And let's say that the path is coming from here. Just going in with some Van Dyke Brown and make it bigger as it comes towards you. And this is only Van Dyke Brown. Put some paint in. And now we're gonna come here and highlight it. Take some white, some dark sienna again. Do not overmix, cut off a roll of paint. And now, very, very gently, we're gonna come here and by caressing. Let's have it a little bit lighter so you can see it. A little bit more white. Just go in here and caress it a little bit. No pressure. Same way we do with the mountains. There we are. That's better. This is uh, one of the easiest and nicest ways to do little paths and now we need to bring all that together take some green and cadmium yellow indian yellow yellow ochre and let's go above this and bring it all together some nice colors here today let's have a nice bush here with indian yellow and always remember to leave dark areas in between the bushes. It's very very important otherwise your painting will become flat and you won't like that. We want depth as we said earlier. And now as you can see the path in here is secluded. It actually pushes it back. It's a very nice effect. A little bit more paint and some here and there 
and as you can see the path comes this way it's very nice it actually shows us that this piece of land is going up it's high and some nice bushes here and there too using no no pressure okay let's scratch in some sticks and twigs separate all these mainly go into the dark areas so you actually can see the small trunks and all these the sticks that hold the bushes in here and I think we have a finished painting I would like to thank you very much for watching me this is the first episode of the second season I'm looking forward to coming back and make more paintings for you this is just a basic paint that you use all the equipment you actually experience lots of joy doing these nice aspects and you can vary the colors, you can vary the season, the lights whatever you want to do, you can do in here and that's why I am here for you to show it so until next time I'd like to wish you happy painting take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode